everyone. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Mid-American Gardener. I'm your host, Tanisha Spain. And joining me in the studio today to talk all things gardening with you are two of our buddies, Shane and Marty, are here. So let's have them introduce themselves and tell you a little bit more about them, and then we'll get started. So, Marty, we'll start with you. We'll start with me. Hello there in TV land. This is Marty Alanya tuning in from Urbana. <laughs> I brought some show and tells. I usually landscape and then I tried to retire from landscaping and I'm, I'm almost out almost I'm so close <laughs> you got but those couple extra clients that just somehow I still keep buying stuff from his company so <laughs> I don't know it happens all right Shane hi I'm Shane Coulter I'm one of the family of owners of Country Arbor's Nursery in Urbana Illinois and I've uh, since retired after 28 years of operations so wow. now I am a full-time gardener I'm getting closer to what Marty's doing. I, I'm trying to relax, but then I'm getting more in the garden and more in the garden. And I, I'm trying to stay out of everybody's way at the nursery just to let them do their thing. You can't. But I just love plants. It's, uh, yeah. it's what we do. It's what we do. So, uh, I've been on the show for, I think, over 20 years yes. now, since 1995. So I've been answering a lot of questions over the years, and I plan on doing more today. Excellent. You got two of the best here with us on the show. So. For starters, let's talk about this weather, you guys, because it has been cold. Yes. I don't know if it's unseasonably cold because, I, you know, weather is, does its own thing. But, um, you know, for those of us who are gardeners and we have things peaking up above ground um, mm -hmm. and these really cold overnights, let's talk tips. Um, so what do you do if you come outside and let's say your hosta is covered in ice? Do you, how do you, do you need to cut it back? Let's talk about how to save those plants that get nipped overnight. But, let let them let it thaw, and see what you get. Yeah. They're very hardy. They're very hardy. Yeah, it just depends on how we get the cold. So if we were at eighty degrees and then we move hard back into the freeze mm -hmm. area, then you've got to be careful. We've been pre we've had a couple warm days, but it's mm -hmm. been generally the the mornings have been a little cooler. So it oh, hasn't. Yeah. They're not really, you know, they're not really limp and soft. They are new growth. But compared to how it has been in some years where we just get these really warm weeks, it's really not so bad. But my biggest thing that I tell people, if you're going to cover something, if you just want to, because a lot of people are going to cover it no matter what I say, cloth. Don't put plastic. Plastic makes it worse. If yeah. you put plastic over anything, it's just going to make it freeze worse, yep. get more like old lettuce. Definitely use some extra bed blanket or something along the sheets. Yeah, I, I <laughs> Even burlap. Yeah, I mean, burlap just, works well. Anything yeah. in big pieces okay. that's a natural material, okay. that's really good. People do get really excited, but we don't want to be the person that says, don't worry about it, and then all of a sudden something goes horrible. But at the same time, people really get upset about it. And I always told people, you came here asking about one plant, Look around the nursery. <laughs> There's one yeah. million plants yeah. out here. So yeah. you can tell yeah. by the way I'm moving and what I'm covering how bad I think it's going to be. Yeah. And if you notice, I'm standing here talking to you and not really yeah, making any movements. We're probably going to be fine. Yeah. So watch yeah. the can, nursery. Yeah, stand. watch watch the nursery. If you want to know, just go out to the nursery and see if they've covered things. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My, well, a friend of mine just asked me the other day. He said, I've got lilies coming up. They're stargazers. And he said, I'm thinking about putting a bucket over them because it's supposed to freeze. And I said, well, does, does the part, the, the lily growth fit easily under a bucket? Cause don't yeah. bend them, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. He says, I'm like, they'll be fine. Yeah. I mean, they're in a partial shade bed. They're overhung by big deciduous trees. The house is right there close. I mean, it's not like they're out on the tundra, yeah. but also I said, and if, and if you things you're worried about what really works too is, uh, cloth like a, I suggest a sheet yeah. to him um, I would have said burlap but and everybody doesn't have that laying around but sure. I do <laughs> so <laughs> um, just a tomato cage over something mm -hmm. you know to get it get it up off the, the vegetation that you're trying to save um, and then drape the drape your material over the top of it it's just it's a, they just need a little yeah tent. it's, just it's a also little, a oh. good reason to mulch early so we always yeah. recommend mulching early because you can trim up a little bit, mulch everything, mm -hmm. and then the plants come up through. Yep. If you wait, then all the plants are up and you have to mulch around it. So it takes three mm -hmm. times as long. Yep. But also by mulching early, you have a nice little protection. Mm -hmm. So everything that comes through, even if you get nipped back a little bit, you've at least covered that and it'll just start over yep. if it's come through. So yeah, mulch is a very helpful to keep that ground. And then like you said about 
um, the protection. If the wind moves a little bit, that's actually better. So it's yeah. when things really freeze or when it's stagnant still, and the cold sets in. Really still, so if it's yeah. going to be a little windy and cold, then you're even better off. You can add a couple degrees if there's wind. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, are there any um, long-term effects of this chilly snap that we're having? Will, will certain flowers maybe not flower or stay smaller? Or is there anything that we should be looking for in our yards in that area? It's going to be pretty damn cold. Yeah, it has to be. Flower. The one thing you would watch out if we got a really hard snap are pears. So pears will get new growth. Yeah. The, the leaves will freeze and then you'll get blight. That ah. happens very, very often when we get these 80 degrees and then we get down to under 30. And then you get the little soft ends, and then that rots away, and then you get blight in the tips. Gotcha. So, mm -hmm. But we shouldn't be planting pears anyway, so that would be yeah. the older pears. If we got rid of all the pears, I would have no problem. Not that I want <laughs> oh, anybody to lose their beautiful tree. <laughs> but You're uh, not the only one that said that. No. I absolutely. No. Watching the invasive pears in the neighborhood, and then I was down in Nashville. They're everywhere. It's mm -hmm. a huge problem. So mm -hmm. don't plant pears, please. So how do we get out of that mess while we're here visiting yeah, that topic? Yeah. How do we how do we get out of that? Just like with the um, the Asian carp, you know, we have to just accept that they are going yeah. to be in, absorbed into yeah. our environment. So is that what we're going to see with the pears? Yeah, you just have to keep chopping them. I mean, like in, in Stone Creek and Urbana, the vacant lots are absolutely covered in pears. There's 10,000 pears in the empty lots. Wow. And so they mow them over so they don't go to fruit. That's gotcha. about all you can do is just make sure that it doesn't go further. But in the wild of, of Nashville, Tennessee, I don't know what they're going to do. It's not, but all we can do is a panel and as a, a gardener is, is pick all the other beautiful trees. <laughs> Find like, there's so one, yeah. many other choices. I know it's fast and it's cheap, but as a garden center, you know, you really want to limit the amount and then get the fruitless if you can. They're never gotcha. completely fruitless. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we all have to do our duty. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's not that, but the freeze will take care of them if they... If we get that, nature will clean up the mess, yeah. huh? Blight, what do you tell blight, people blight, when blight. they're asking, <laughs> when they just are dead set on that tree when you were landscaping? Because I know you're retired now, but what would you uh, tell people? What other was, options? When I was landscape, oh, I would always suggest a dogwood or an ammo anchor before yeah. a, a pear. But I mean, I've I've installed my share of them, but you know that was a while back when they weren't taking over the world. Yeah, <laughs> and they're we not all as did. bad as Japanese honeysuckle. Yes, yeah. so, true. There's always you know, a Japanese honeysuckle. An imported plant by the United States government because they know better than God. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So as we're bouncing back from this cold snap and slowly marching towards uh, warmer days, let's talk about hardening off. On a house plant. Um, I've already started bringing them out. It, mm. it just depends on what your house is. How hard is it to get it out? If mm -hmm. it's something that you can't lift and it's a one-time thing, that's gonna stay yes. out. <laughs> I think we wait a little bit longer. Yeah. Maybe another, May is a good, it's hard to say, it's hard to put it on a calendar, but generally May and then an extra blanket. So we're, like right now when we're 36, 38, 40, on most things we're fine. It's really not, you know, a palm tree can take that. Mm -hmm. You've seen them down in Florida. And that helps them get adjusted to our new weather. And you can also bring in a blanket. I'm fortunate that the back of my house has a back garage and I can slide it into the ah. garage. Uh, <laughs> or if it's on the front porch and you can put it in the garage. You know, it's, it just depends on where it is. Or under the overhang. But we're getting into hardening off yeah. periods. Like we're getting to the point where we can bring some things out. Mm -hmm. Like I was looking at the weather this week. We do have some 50s mm -hmm. and 30s pushing it for mm -hmm. that. But next week we're going to do that come back up the and then swing. once you start getting into mm -hmm. eight or to may you're you're a couple blankets away from being absolutely covered <laughs> literally. scientific literally right yeah <laughs> it's I an mean, industry term yes yeah, it is. exactly <laughs> yeah so 50s 60s is safe or 60s yeah and even yes. at night yeah. 40s are fine okay that's not a problem with any of these plants for the most part coleus you know there's a couple plants that i would say no petunias and coleus, those kind of your canaries. If your coleus is, if it's cold, your coleus is going to get hit. It's yeah, really a soft, true. gentle plant. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I think you're fine, especially your house plants and your, mm -hmm. um, all your different, you know, whatever you're doing, monsteras and things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. I've got them outside now, and I haven't okay. covered them, and I'm not going to cover them. All right, you heard it here first, folks. I know, I hate <laughs> saying that. That's when the 
DMs start coming in there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, plants that you get from the nursery, are they already hardened off or do they need that period before you put them in the ground or in I'd pots? I'd say no. No? Unless okay. their heater went out. Yeah. No, they're all. There and the other thing go. is they're in a greenhouse. And so when it's 80 degrees and sunny, it's 100 degrees. If the, um, and if it's 40 yeah. degrees and sunny, it's 80 degrees. So yeah. those greenhouses are always really warm. You have to, they're definitely not hardened off. Okay. If anything, you need to bring those out. Mm -hmm. immediately to, to adjust them. Maybe not direct sun, but out of the greenhouse mm -hmm. and into some warm because it's used to being in tropical. That's just what I was gonna say. Yeah. Do you, yeah. What about the conditions? I just, well, uh, some, I was just giving my friends some ideas about a yard arrangement there and we, we took a stroll around the other day and they're gonna put in a couple of dogwoods and um, I just ran into them yesterday <laughs> to lunch and they were having lunch in the same place. So we were talking about this, and she said, uh, I'm kind of concerned because the the dogwoods were inside of a, a greenhouse mm. where we bought them. Do we need to kind of harden them off a little? And, and her husband was like, I, I had them outside, but then I brought them back in when it was supposed to be cold. I said, well, they're dogwoods. So, but I didn't anticipate them being in a greenhouse. Yeah. So, ah. yeah, well, you know, they kind of push them, so they bloom and... They're yep. attractive, and then people sure. buy them. But uh, I said, "Yeah, you might, you might wanna." They're not bald and burlap; they're in a big pot. I said, "So you might wanna just leave them out on the front porch, which is mostly shady, and mm -hmm. they get a little midday sun, mm -hmm. and then, I mean, you don't have to take them in, but yeah, I kind of would, maybe. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't think about them, the trees mm -hmm. being in a in a greenhouse, so." Okay. And the, I mean, they're not twigs. They're, you know, yep. tall as good size. Things, things yeah. are grown in containers now at huge sizes. Yeah. So. Okay. So good to know. We don't want to waste our investment. That's the no. one thing you don't want to yeah. do is buy your things and then the install not go well. Well, so. and then dogwoods are an understory tree and where they're putting them, they're overhung by large deciduous trees to the south and a, and a little stand of white pines to the north. So, and it's a little bit of a slope. Mm -hmm. It should be fine. Mm -hmm. They've got plenty mm -hmm. of protection there. Okay. Yep. All right. Let's get into some of the stuff you guys bought. Uh, do you want to talk about which one? Choose which one you want to do first. We'll talk about either one. Uh, I have potato and onion sets. Here, I'll just... Um, Let's do potato the, first. The reason yeah. I brought the... I just brought the potatoes because I was going to show you that... Or, yeah, these have started to sprout out. You see these, these little guys? When potatoes have eyes on them, the little roots come out, you know, they start looking fancy. They get a little starry-eyed. You see what I did there? You know, they got that little... It's like my pantry. Let's see. They got that little... <laughs> yeah, one too. <laughs> These are actually seed potatoes. They are not potatoes uh. that I just grew to eat and, and left on their own. So I don't know if we can get a close-up of this or not somewhere. I'm not sure. But yeah. Oh, I'm turning ah. the wrong way. Yeah, see, right. so that eye gets a little... This gets this little root ring around it. And then the potato sprout comes out in the middle. So these have been sitting on my dining room table in a plastic bag for a week because I bought them and so it started raining <laughs> again. I cut these. They sometimes design these just to be seed potatoes. You just drop them in the ground, but you, uh, I just made two. <laughs> and then um, if there's more, I could actually make three out of this if I wanted, but I don't think I will. Here's another eye back here, but it's, it's looking uh, recalcitrant, so we're just gonna leave that one go. But I, when I cut these, I cut them into more, I try to get the largest ones I can, ha I can find in the, uh, in the seed potato bin. How many eyes do you want per piece that you're going to plant? I'm gonna, I'm gonna have at least one good one and maybe another okay. two. So here's one, these are right together and they're, here, I'm get on the camera. Mm -hmm. These are two, they're sprouting green, and then there's, an, there's a third guy here, and then there's a fourth guy over here. So I like to have at least two eyes on each piece. And, and sprout side up or sprout side down? Um, I, I, will just, I will just lay them in the row like that mm -hmm. with the cut side down usually, cut but also okay. I'm doing uh, cuts on these and I'm going to let them sit about 24, they're going to have to sit about 48 hours. I don't have time to plant them until like Friday. So um, I, like to, I like to have that cut harden off. 
I just, I just do. Uh, that's why my dad did it. He's an amazing gardener. He was just remarkable. We ate potatoes from the garden all winter. So he knew how to grow potatoes. So I just take my cue from him. But yeah, it's really easy. You just take your pocket knife and you, <laughs> and you, and you cut. The, this has got a ton of them. This has got a ton of starts on yeah, it. Yeah, it does. And it's because it's a bigger potato. So I'm going to cut this guy in half. And letting them callous, that mm -hmm. is, you said about 48 hours or 24? Um, I'm going to do, well, I just, I simply do not have time ah. to plant <laughs> gotcha, them gotcha. for a couple days. But ordinarily, I would let them sit a couple days. I want, I want that surface to be dry, and I don't want it to invite any sort of a fungal problem or mm -hmm. attract a creature who likes fresh potatoes. <laughs> and those can go in the ground now-ish? You can, you can cut them and plant them immediately, but I don't like to do that. So this no, I mean, uh, date-wise, like is it, is it potato planting yeah. time? Yes, we, it is. We've gotten yeah. to that point, okay. Here in the you know central Illinois, a lot of people say, well, you get your potatoes planted by March 17th on St. Patrick's Day. I didn't have time to do that. I was out of town. Um, so, gotcha. too bad. <laughs> Better late than never, right? Yes. I, I typically, my garden is the lowest spot in my yard. So it's the wettest spot in yeah. my yard, which is great in July. Not so much in April. Right. So, and especially root crops, you don't want to dig in your garden when it's muddy. So this big potato, I cut it in half and then I cut this in half again. And in theory, I could cut even this one in half because it's got one, two, three, four, five little starts, but I probably won't. I'll just leave it like that. I okay. would have cut that. I'm so greedy. <laughs> I would have you want more, huh? Yeah, I was like yeah, cut absolutely. Half. Yeah. I would, that's all I was thinking about is I would cut that. I right. would totally cut that. Here, more just, potatoes for everybody. More just for Shane. For There's I'll cut this like in half, too. too. Yeah. My father-in-law so grows the most excellent potatoes in Potomac. They are so good, so fluffy. Yeah. He does red and yellow. Yeah. Um, what what variety kind of do you have there? These are red Pontiacs. Red I prefer Pontiac. red potatoes. We were talking about this before the show. I just prefer red potatoes. The, the flavor's a little sweeter. They're not as dry texturally, but I just like them. I think the flavor's better. So yeah. there you go. Okay. So these are going to sit around. I'm going to cut all the rest of them I have at home, too. I didn't buy just three. <laughs> and then <laughs> they're just going to sit around, like, in a pan, cut side up, till they dry for a couple days, and then I'll plant them. And when I plant them, I don't do, I try to do as little tilling as possible, and I'll probably just make a shallow row, and I'll lay these in it, I'll push, I'll lay them down, like we were saying, cut side down with the, with the eye pointing up, and then I'll pull a little dirt around them, but not much, hmm. and then I lay straw. When you straw potatoes, my dad used to shake it up all the time, but I'm too lazy to do that. But he had a better <laughs> potato crop than me, so, you yeah. know, six and one half does the other. So, when you get a bale of straw, it comes off in little pieces. Those are called flakes. You know, it's like, so I take a flake and, and I put a row of potatoes there, a little bit of soil up around them, and then I lay the, the straw flakes like this. I just put them right there. I put a little crease mm -hmm. like a little right rooftop. over the row of the potatoes. And incidentally, these need to go farther apart than that. So, <laughs> so yeah, it's just like a little, little flake. And I put the crease right there where these little guys are going to come up through. And that's all the soil I put on them. Hmm. They grow up through the straw. Um, incidentally, it's not vital to have a big piece of potato on these. That's plenty big enough. It's not living off the potato. As soon as you get it in the ground, these little roots are going to start mm -hmm. slurping up nutrition from the, from the earth. Okay. So, and that is how you plant potatoes? Yeah. yeah. And, it's, and I do them shallow with the straw over them when it's time to harvest. Sometimes you They're can just take the yeah. neck of the th and pull it right up. We used to have to dig them. Like carrot I've, potatoes. I've left <laughs> off with that. Yeah, I have left off digging potatoes. I just pull them up and, you know, shake the straw off. It's there awesome. There you go. Okay, yeah. thank you. All right. All right, what'd you bring? All right, well, I brought one of my favorite plants. It's, um, you know, when you go to a garden center, the people will recommend plants that are usually in their yard because that's mm -hmm. what you do. You see a plant every day, and then when they say, what's your favorite plant? So when, ah. when we have somebody at the nursery, our best-selling plants aren't necessarily the best plants. It's the plants that people have in their yard. Mm -hmm. So that's why you work at a nursery. So they give you as many plants as you can <laughs> because they know if you enjoy it, you're going to sell a lot more of them. <laughs> right. But this one is called Lilac Prairie Petite. So Prairie okay. Petite, 
It is the perfect small lilac. There's other lilacs out there that are dwarf Korean that are like three or actually five feet or six feet. We call them three feet, but they're really five or six foot oh, plants. Yeah. But that's just too big for a lot of areas. This one in my yard is 18 years old and it is three by three and it's never been trimmed, not one day. And it is absolutely covered in these fragrant full flowers. Wow. So you get all the flowers of the big ones, but you get the short little stature of this plant. The problem is, and we, again, we talk, we talk a lot of before the show. Yeah, but you should be we, here. <laughs> we talk it, it's, it grows really slow. Mm -hmm. So garden centers generally don't care, or growers, I should say, don't grow it because they get a lot more money growing a Miss Kim or a, a Dwarf Korean because mm -hmm. they get to market much quicker and they can sell that and get their money. Mm -hmm. This one is, takes us five or six years to get to a three gallon size. And, but we did it. So at the nursery, we've got 200 of them. It's really our first crop that we've had. We've done it before, but we've all taken them home. So they never made it to the actual market. <laughs> they, they made it to, to our houses. It's a beauty so, working at a garden yeah, center. I'm, yeah. I'm super, super excited. And, and <laughs> you know, in gardening, it's patience, but as a grower, it really is patience. Just think that we had to wait six years to get one plant to sell. And that's why you see things are a little bit more money based on how long it took to get to market. That's sure, when people say, sure. I mean, it's it's demand too, if it's something hot. But in general, if a tree is more expensive, it's generally because it's a slower growing tree. Mm -hmm. That's a really good indicator of oh, it. Oh, they smell lovely but too. But they, they really do, whereas some of the dwarf Koreans, they really don't have much smell. I mean, they're mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. but it's not like that big, the big lilac. Fragrance. And Which the flowers are different not too, too long yeah. ago that we, he, we humans, yeah. uh, planted a lot, a, lot, a lot of lilacs near windows because we were stinky. Yeah, I can't remember who told it makes sense. who said that, but uh, like you know, before the days of regular their showering, their purpose is to cover up. It was to fragrance the home and fragrance the people yeah. who lived there. <laughs> well, that's why we take flowers. We didn't have to aluminum funerals. based that deodorant. That's true. So. Yeah, <laughs> and brides holding bouquets. Like, yeah, all of that is is our bad Saturday hygiene. Saturday night bad. Yes. Take that bad. Uh, poor hygiene yeah. history. Yeah. So you learned you something know. today. <laughs> um, where would this go uh, in your landscape? Yeah, What's so the it's. Spot? I was just talking about. So for instance, my mom has this that little area area between your sidewalk and your front porch. Mm -hmm. Okay. Everybody plants things that get too big. Yes, that's what it was. Yes. It, it, there were boxwoods there and they're well, hanging me, over. But yeah. No, <laughs> but then but the other thing is when you plant them for a customer and you plant a plant that's only this big and the space is larger and yeah. they say you know, I spent a lot of money and I've got three mm -hmm. plants that aren't taking up the space. No. And we say, it's right. going to be perfect. Yeah. yeah. Put a pot. Yeah. You know, put a pot in between. Do something crazy yeah. in the in the middle yeah. that you don't notice the tininess. But it's perfect for that area. Mine's off the corner of a house. I just didn't have a lot of room. Mm -hmm. um, and so anything that's three by three. So even in yeah. mass, if you put four of them across a window, underneath a window, yep. because we always mess up when we plant as far as how big things really get. Our tags are yeah. generally wrong because we don't want to scare you. If you see a, <laughs> if you see a, a river birch, it's going to say 35 feet. Nah, no. That, no. that's going to be 50, 60 oh, feet. Yeah. <laughs> but if I told you it's 50, 60 feet, you would never no. buy it. No. And they say, and then the other thing that we always joke about is everybody's like, I'm going to get it anyway because I'm going to trim it. And then we're all like, no, you're not. You're never okay. No. <laughs> but this, you don't have no. to. This Excellent. is one that will stay three by three. You don't have to trim it like a lilac. And since we're talking trimming, the time to trim, if you want to trim a lilac, is when the lilac flowers are done. It's Ooh, the perfect okay. time. Mm -hmm. Once you've gone through the whole cycle, you trim all those flowers off, shape it up a little bit, mm -hmm. and a lot of them will, even if they're not supposed to rebloom, will rebloom again. The mm -hmm. rebooming bloomerang uh, varieties mm -hmm. definitely will bloom again. They do. Nice. So they do. that's a just, if you learn anything from the show, the best time to trim almost any plant is right after it's bloomed. Okay. Yeah, noted. Are Particularly we, all the, oh. the spring uh, shrubs. Yeah, you know, like especially that. Uh, mock orange, all of those, and lilacs as well. And they well. really shape Vibranium. up nice when you do it that way. Yeah. Lovely. Okay. Can you talk about onions in two minutes? Yeah. Hit it. I can. <laughs> We're going to uh, find out. Again. Let me cover those up. I bought this. these. Could you please? Uh, so I, I bought these, like I said, a couple weeks ago, both of these starts, and then it just started raining and it's too muddy to plant, particularly root crops. So I have mudded in tomatoes before, but I'm not going to do these. Um, so these guys are sprouting because they're in my house, but it doesn't matter. You just make your little, make your little ditch, you know, plant them in there. If you don't mind them being smaller, plant them closer together. If you want them bigger, plant them farther away. It takes more garden space. You can also do this. You can dig 
you know, dig out a little wider spot. And if you want bigger onions, you can put them this far, but then you can put one here. So you can stagger them a little bit and mm -hmm. you get a little bit more efficient use of your of your garden space if you're growing for, for big onions. Some people are convinced that size matters, but not necessarily in onions. Well, we're out of time. You guys, it goes so fast, quick. every time, every but wait, time. But wait, there's more. But wait, there's <laughs> more. Thank you so much for coming, and thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time. Good night.